relentlessly motivated to me, like that definition really breaks down to relentlessly making sure that you are always on your P's and Q's. So there's right. a lot of discipline that comes with a relentless approach to growth. Right. Motivation can come from external sources, right? Money, pats on the back, applause, yeah. pride, ego, all that stuff externally. But that relentless motivation, that comes internal. Right. That's like some inspiration, that's some purpose. That's why you do what you do. You're, you're using that platform to the utmost respect and the way that you're doing it is in a manner that these kids can look at you and be like, wow, I mean, he was once like me. Yeah, I remember my undrafted like situation. There's field one and field two. There's an offensive coordinator, defensive coordinator, all the coaches, all the guys that are gonna be on the te on the 53 over on field one, everyone else on field two. Yeah. And it's like, all the tape gets watched, but like you're in that moment it's like, man, why, like, why should I carry that fake out? Why should I, why, why, why do all these details matter? What is your goals, or what's like, what's, your, what are you trying to accomplish with the podcast and the platform that you've built yeah. through nine years in the league, all your experiences, your family, you got everything going for you. Like, what, what are you hoping that your audience gets out of this? Yeah. The people that you're trying to serve, like the platform that you've built. Like, what do they want to hear out of you on a regular basis that you can give to them? Booster takes off and goes the distance with a touchdown. What place would y'all rather be right now, man? Come on. Let's be great today, man. What's going on, everybody? It's Raheem Moster, host of Relentlessly Motivated, presented by Mercury. Appreciate you guys joining us. We're going to have weekly episodes for you with athletes, business professionals, and anyone alike that overcame obstacles and turned them into positives. We will be dropping new episodes every week, trying to showcase some of the best adversity stories in sports and everyday life. You can find us wherever you normally listen to your podcast. Apple, Spotify, YouTube. We will be everywhere. Enjoy the show. Before we get into the pod, I want to tell you about the sponsor of today's show, Manscaped. For me, it's all about looking good, feeling good, and playing good. And the way that I make sure that I'm looking good up top and down below is with Manscaped. Trust me, I've had raving reviews. And it all starts with the performance package. It comes with a beard trimmer, a groin trimmer, some things that get you smelling nice downstairs, and even two free gifts. And I've got you an exclusive offer. Head to manscaped.com right now and use my code MOTIVATED20 for 20% off plus free shipping. That's 20% off with free shipping at manscaped.com with code MOTIVATED20. You're gonna like the way you look. Guaranteed. What's going on, everybody? It's another episode of Relentlessly Motivated. It's your boy Raheem Moster, and I have the pleasure, mm. honor, distinction of having my brother alongside me to talk about mindset, growth, what it what it means to be relentless, to be motivated, all that good stuff. No introduction needed other than the fact that this guy right here is one of the toughest guys that I know. He goes above and beyond with any and everything he does. Mr. Alec Engel, what's going on, bro? Round of applause. <laughs> heck of a heck of an introduction. I appreciate, I appreciate that. that. No, I appreciate Thanks you, for having man. me on, man. It's uh it's cool to share different spaces with you. You yeah. know what I'm saying? We're in the meeting room all the time. Yeah. You're in the daily grind. We hang out every single day yeah, during the season. We do. In the off season, I swear, it's even better getting to see you guys and you in your different spaces whether we're going over to your house you're welcoming the boys over yeah we're going to play golf like yeah. all yeah. the different spaces that we can create <laughs> so i'm excited to do this one now it's, it's a new one yeah it's uh it's a it's a new a new opportunity um but also it's it's about the growth and and what it means to be uh relentless what it means to be uh motivated and and you know I know your story. I know everything about you, you know, just because we spend, like you said, so much time together that, like, we're so familiar with each other, right? Um, but for those that don't know you, you know, you want to give them a little background of, of who you are as a person, individual, um, what makes you go, um, and what's the biggest, biggest thing that you could take from life that, you know, really helps inspire you as a person? Yeah, so first off, I would just say, relentlessly motivated to me, like that definition really breaks down to 
relentlessly making sure that you are always on your P's and Q's. So there's right. a lot of discipline that comes with a relentless approach to growth, right. right? So when you're motivated, I feel like that's a positive thing. Like motivation can come from external sources, right? Money, um, production, pats on the back, applause, yeah. pride, ego, all that stuff externally. But that relentless motivation, that comes internal. Right. That's like some inspiration, that's some purpose. That's why you do what you do, right? Right. So when you always talk about when you release the clothing line, when you uh, have the foundation and it's all about RM, relentlessly motivated, yeah. uh, that's kind of that internal drive that I take with me everywhere I go. That's kind of how I internalize that. So you know, my story really starts from, from the jump, just growing up in Green Bay, Wisconsin, being a... <laughs> Being a country boy a little oh, bit man. and uh, having to uh, go about the things I go about. And I always looked up to NFL football players as that motivation, as that that thing that I wanted to chase and make sure that I was being the best person I could be. Yeah, and the pinnacle, right? Yeah that, yeah, that was the pinnacle. In Green Bay, it was the Packers. And yeah. you look up to those guys like they're superheroes. Man. Yeah. And growing up in that space, I always knew that athletics – would be able to inspire other people, right? And it would be able to bring people together. So I always wanted a taste of that, whether it was football, wrestling, baseball, with the boys, it didn't matter. It was, it made people feel good, man. And um, yeah, so that's kind of where my story started and my love for football and that relentless growth uh, to go through that. And uh, yeah, man, it's been a pleasure to kind of see that come full circle now, to have a platform now, to be in the NFL, to be in the league, to share space with you yeah. uh, and hear all the different stories and all the different backgrounds from others and how you make it to where you're at and what you do with that platform and how you're able to grow and inspire others. Yeah, so he, this guy right here, he has an unbelievable, like an unbelievable like knack for basically getting people to, you know, be – be who they are, be comfortable with themselves and, and to like really grow. Um, he has a, a, a foundation and everything like that, that just, that helps the youth, um, especially adopted uh, youth and stuff like that. And um, I think that is just the most unbelievable thing. You know, I, I grew up, um, and I don't know if he knows this, but I grew up um, not knowing who my true father was. So, um, for me, you know, I still I have a, even more connection with what he's doing, um, you know, simply because I don't know necessarily who my father is out there. Um, and, you know, moving forward, I grew up, you know, just basically having a guy in my household who I didn't want to be right, who I didn't want to grow up, grow up as. And and so that was my thing was. How can I get away from my situation? Um, you know, one thing for me was, hey, I want to have a beautiful family. I think that that was the best thing that, you know, ever ha that could ever happen to me right now, right? Um, I have three young boys. Um, I have a beautiful wife. Um, and that's what I want. I wanted a wife and a family that was just, you know, that epitomized uh, everything that a household needed to be, right? Um, and so... For Alec, I know that's the same. He's he has a beautiful wife right now. I'm not gonna say it like that, you know. I his, <laughs> I can't do it like that, you know. Yeah, yeah. I'm just saying it, their marriage is unbelievable. Like I, I I absolutely adore what they get what they got going on. Like I I met his wife Miss Iggy. That's what I call her. Yeah, <laughs> she's awesome. Um, my wife and and his wife definitely get along. They're good friends. They go out together and stuff like that, um, and hang out. So. Um, but my thing is, you know, if you're able to get people to be themselves, which Alec is able to do, I think that that's the most important thing because it shows you that, you know, even though you like getting picked on at school or you're you're people don't feel like you're, you know, one of them, you could always look back and be like, well, I know somebody that's, you know, that's setting the standard and, and what Alec is doing, man, he's setting the standard for a lot of, a lot of kids out there. Um, and, and I'm just, I'm thrilled, man. Can you, now with all that being said, can you explain what you do with the adoption and, and the process and, and everything like that? Cause it's, it's not new to me. I know, I know deep about it because like I said, I, I, I have a relationship with you and, and we talked about those things, but um, 
can you let the people know like what all you do with your foundation with your your community outreach yeah no i think the ingold family foundation really came to be um about that adoption story like Mm -hmm. you touched on and i had the picture perfect adoption story i have a father and a mother that love each other live in the same house up in green bay that we grew up in it was a stable household and it was like man that's the epitome of what a family should be and every kid should grow to know love and support and find that whether it's from a coach a mentor a parent whatever but that family is important so being a, a voice for those kids in foster care and adoption um, being able to use this platform for some good, I think was extremely important. Yeah. And you touch on your upbringing and, and how that impacts your goals and your purpose, right? Like for you to have, to be able to witness the way that you go about your family, you're always talking about your kids, always yeah. talking about wifey. <laughs> it, it's cool and it's inspiring to be able to to know the amount of adversity you may go through at a young age can really impact and help other people find their voice and right. not just by words but by actions and that's what you do on a daily basis so you know that's where a family foundation where we can play a game of madden with some kids <laughs> and just get their mind off of it put on a foster care football camp yeah. and allow kids to come from uh caseworkers or home structures that are wrong and be able to go play um play some football with some dolphins for the day and yeah. just like get their mind off things, whether it's education on financial literacy, different things that can set them up for a strong, stable future uh, where they can stand on their own two feet is really the basis of our foundation. Um, but really just epitomizing your story, your testimony, and then being able to bring other people along with that. Cause you're saying the same messages that they hear from parents, teachers, coaches, yeah. people in their lives, but it comes a little different when you yeah, have a football player when yeah. you have a football player telling you right it's like a little cool factor i don't know what yeah. it is but it's like it's like you excited. got that you got that platform that you use and it's like you're you're using that platform to the utmost respect and the way that you're doing it is in a manner that like these kids can look at you and be like wow i mean he was once like me you know i, I remember when i was in in san francisco and we did this thing where we went to like juvenile centers mm-hmm. and we talked to these kids right and they just couldn't believe that like a guy like me who I shared my story with, you know, not knowing who my true father was, um, having all these different adversities uh, go on at an early age, you know, um, they couldn't believe the the position that I'm in to be able to come to them. And, you know, they're, they're looking up at me like, hey, look, he made it like right. he knows what it takes. Like, what do I got to do like that? It gives them extra like care. Like right. they, they understand that, you know, their choices at the time, you know, when they were doing their, their, you know, their deeds that it wasn't the right thing for them. But then when you have somebody like a figure like yourself or, or, or I like, you know, um, go in and into these places and these kids are just like ecstatic. Like they're like it, like the biggest smile is on their face just because not only who you are as a person or as a player, but like what you bring to them that joy the the happiness even though you went through some triumph and 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 challenges and stuff like that um growing up the vulnerability that you share with those kids at the juvenile center the authenticity the yeah. willingness to just be yourself yeah. can really break down a lot of barriers right yeah, that, can. that can really allow for true connection for genuine authentic conversation yeah. and like real talk yeah and that's where i think a lot of like you you want to protect your platform you want to speak right you want to make sure that you're all politically correct but at the end of the day the kids have the best bs meters in the world man they know (laughs) they they know what you're talking about whether that's real or if it's fake and if you've been through it if you've lived it and you can be real with how you felt during that process it's like dang now these kids can be real and authentic with how they're going about it and that's a, a cool way to be able to show your stepping stones your blueprint that of yeah. where you start and where you've gone yeah and now it's like okay take this blueprint now go do whatever you want to do yeah. you know one of those camps we did is a money mini camp financial literacy professional job development which i think that was awesome it's like, it's shows them different blueprints you yeah. don't have to be you know whatever cookie cutter thing you want to be or what you're supposed to think right. and to show those blueprints and have kids be like man i might be an entrepreneur i might you know be able to express myself be creative over here one kid wanted to be an astronaut it's like yeah. man be proud of that yeah. like whether it happens or not 
let's give you some blueprints to success. Let's, let's fill your toolbox up, let's sharpen the tools, but then let's let you take that wherever you want it to go. You don't have to want to be a football player. You don't want to have to be a podcast. You don't yeah. have to want to do whatever you want to do. Whatever is in your heart, man, be proud of that. And yeah. then go chase it relentlessly, yeah. be motivated. Yeah. And that, that's, that's why I started my foundation as well, you know, Ways of Success Foundation. Um, I figured there's many different ways to be successful. You know, it's a play mm -hmm. on words, but yeah. there's many different ways to be successful, right? You don't necessarily have to be a, a professional athlete, right? You know, you could, you could be the the a lawyer. You know, be the best lawyer you possibly can be. <laughs> what? Like, be be an attorney. Be a chef. Like, you have all these opportunities to to create. A, a dream of yours like if you love food I love food like <laughs> I want to be a chef <laughs> but I got this thing called football right now <laughs> man. like it's a priority you, you got know? a day job right yeah, now I got, a, I got a day job right now so I like to cook on the side but you know I eventually I, I, I want to but you know that's the thing that you want to get the uh, message across to these kids is like it doesn't matter what you see you, like you see Alec Ingold he's a, a top-notch fullback in the NFL you know, he, he came in he came in undrafted. Like he's he's worked his way up. You know, he's he's doing unbelievable things. Yeah, that that's good for Alec, right? But like for these kids, it's like do what you want to do, do what makes you happy. You mm -hmm. know, I would tell them, hey, let's 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 play quarterback or or, or receiver <laughs> or tennis or golf, <laughs> tennis or golf. Yeah, I'm trying to get my kids in golf right oh, now. No. But yeah. how's that going? It ain't going too good. <laughs> we'll figure it out. Hey, man, that undrafted thing you talked about, though, that's real. No, it is. Being I, able, like, we're both undrafted. Yeah, you so, have your own path there. Listen, it is. Before we get back to the pod, I got to tell you about HelloFresh. These meals are so good. My family loves them. And the best part, you get America's number one meal kit shipped right to your front door. So you don't have to go to the grocery store. With my schedule, as crazy as it is, I don't have time to plan out my meals for the week. HelloFresh does all the shopping and meal planning for me so I can come home and have a delicious meal in 30 minutes. Listen, I know what you're thinking. This sounds too good to be true. It's probably super expensive to have meals shipped to your home. Think again. HelloFresh is cheaper than grocery shopping and less expensive than takeout. That means less stress in your day and more money back in your pocket. Oh, and by the way, there's 40 recipes to choose from every week. So I promise you'll find something you like. Just go to HelloFresh.com 50 Rahim. And use code 50RAHIM for 50% 50 off plus free shipping. That's HelloFresh.com slash 50RAHIM. And use code 50RAHIM for 50% 50 off plus free shipping. I had production meeting because we had just played Buffalo, right? Mm -hmm. So I had a production meeting with Tony Romo. Okay. And I sat in this panel with him and a bunch of other people that were, you know, calling the game that day. And... Um, the first thing I did was I, I stopped. I acknowledged the fact that Tony Romo was an undrafted guy. From Wisconsin. From Wisconsin. It, it, let's, let's, <laughs> you know how I feel about my Wisconsin guys. Hey. I, give you, I give you crap every day, <laughs> but it's good crap, though. Yep. Um, but I told him, I said, hey, look, Tony, like, first and foremost, I just want to say I really appreciate you laying the platform for undrafted guys. Like. Man. To be able to do what he's done, you know, is just is it puts an undrafted guy in awe. Like mm -hmm. you really feel that connection, right? And he sat back and he honestly couldn't believe that I like even said that in the production meeting. Like it almost made every everybody in there cry. Like they, <laughs> everybody was like, "Oh my gosh!" Like I can't believe that's I'm, real though. I'm like, but honestly, that's who I am. Like if you know an undrafted guy, you're like, you know who like you know what they went through, right? 100%. Me and him sat for like two or three three more minutes just explaining the process of being an undrafted guy and what it actually takes. Yeah. And he was just like, yeah, you know, like, you're, all, you're third on the depth chart, but, you know, when we had that conversation, um, I brought up the fact that uh, Tom Brady said, hey, look, it takes one rep, goes into two reps. Yeah. Two reps turns to four reps, and you have to make every rep count. Mm -hmm. As an undrafted guy, that's the same case, right? Like, you have to have that mentality. Like, you have to be in a space where you're like, hey, look, I know I'm going to just get a, a, a ball fake. Like, I'm going to get a fake 18. Yeah. 
it's going to be the best damn fake age team you possibly can have. Like, 100%. So it, that's my thing is, like, undrafted guys know what it takes. It's, uh, it's crazy when you talk about Tom Brady having that same mindset or mentality. Yeah. And it's like, as an undrafted guy, it's non-negotiable. You don't have yeah, that choice. Yeah, yeah. And I remember my undrafted, like, situation. There's field one and field two. Yeah. There's an offensive coordinator, defensive coordinator, all the coaches, all the guys that are going to be on the, t- on the 53 over on field one, everyone else on field two. Yeah. And it's like all the tape gets watched, but, like, you're in that moment. It's like, man, why, like, why should I carry that fake out? Why should I ma- – why, why, why do all these details matter over on field two if no one's really coaching you, yeah. if no one's really here in this environment, in that circumstance? It's, it's like, just a test. They yeah. want to see what you can do. They want to like, <laughs> see, like, mentally if you can handle yeah. – th- all of the little details so you can be accountable to the guys that have wife and kids and families that are counting on you to do your job on Sunday. Yeah. And it's like, as a 22 year old kid, how do you not be like, oh, poor me, you know, right. feeling sorry for yourself or starting to point fingers. At, at, at one moment though, you do tend to think like, man, like, why am I going through this phase right now? Like, why, why me? But like, you're also in that mode where like, no, I got to I got to do what I got to do. Your, like, your dream is right there. You're yeah. watching it. You're, You're with watching, people yeah. living the dream that you want. And it's like, it's dog eat dog. It's, yeah. it's a competitive business. Yeah. And it's like, you got to take every single advantage, every opportunity. You got to fight that internal battle of like, man, feeling poor me, yeah. all this stuff with, man, let me be accountable. Let me not complain. Yeah. Let me not let that voice e- eat up at anything else. Right. So yeah, it's that undrafted thing's real. And it's, it's crazy. The amount of guys that have found success after a guy like Tony Romo, his yeah. blaze a trail, being an all-time Dallas Cowboy legend yeah. and you know future Hall of Famer, you would think, yeah. uh, with the numbers that he put up, and it, the people blaze trails, and then you're able to take their blueprint, and you're able to take Raheem's version of that blueprint, and you're going to run tweak with it, it out, the tweak way it out you're a little going. bit, tweak it a little bit, and see what what it comes up out of it. You know, I think my thing is like with all that, you know all that knowledge and everything behind being an undrafted guy, like you still have to go out there and you still have to produce at the highest of like the highest level. Mm -hmm. Like I remember when I was coming in as a rookie in in Philly, right. With Chip Kelly, we had just signed DeMarco Murray. We had just signed Ryan Matthews, two prominent running backs Mm -hmm. (laughs) that were leading the league and rushing at some point in their career. Doing their thing. Doing their thing. And then you had Darren Sproles, which is like... He does his thing different than everybody else. He, everybody you need else. That dude. He's on his own pace. Like, it, it's... Like, I don't know how do you... Like, me, I'm looking back and I'm like, man, how did I really, like, come out of that? Right. Like, and then I had to fight... Me and Kenyon Barner had to fight for the fourth string spot because we, they were taking four running backs mm. because Chip Kelly's offense was made for that. Okay. Right. And so that fourth running back had to play special teams. Had well, to. I'm like, hey, I mean, I, me and Kenyon, we're good boys to this day, but, like, we had to duke it out, yeah. you know. And I helped him on a punt return, and I'm like, ah, well, I'm getting cut. Like, I, <laughs> I tried my best. And yeah. next thing you know, Chip Kelly brought me in the office, you know, the last day. I was the last cut. It was, it was like 8 o'clock at night. Dang. And he, he was just like, I don't know what to tell you. Like you, you've done everything you possibly could. Like I, I'm, I'm sorry. Like I, just, we're gonna take Kenyon. He, uh, you know, he, he, he put on. So we're we're gonna take him. But yep. we're gonna keep you on practice squad. Hope hopefully you don't get picked up. And then the first game of the season got picked up. We were playing a Monday night game against the Falcons in in Atlanta, and I had nothing but Dolphins or. Uh, Eagles gear. Eagles gear on, and I get picked up by the Dolphins. Wow! So I showed up in Davy with nothing but Eagles gear on. <laughs> I remember Joe, right? Yep. The equipment guy. Joe Chimino. Shout out to Joe, man. <laughs> Him and Charlie both were there, and Sweet, and they all they looked at me and they were like, "Yeah, we gotta get you up out of this this <laughs> Eagles gear, man. We gotta put you in some Dolphins stuff." And I'm like, "That's all I had. I mean, yeah." I, and I had my backpack, like you know. I, so it was tough, but I mean, at the end of the day, you know, you do what you got to do, what you got to do, and and be able to overcome adversity, um, especially being an undrafted guy. So, but you know, enough of that, enough of that undrafted stuff. Let's get back to the point about having you here on the podcast. What was the biggest, like, 
hurdle that you had to get over um, in life in general to stay motivated, to stay on track, um, to seek your goals? Mm -hmm. I know that you still got plenty more goals out there. Right. um, But what is one thing that is like it it held you back a little bit and you had to get over that hump? I'd say the fear of failure, Mm. the fear of putting yourself out there and truly trying your hardest and then falling short. Yeah. So there's a number of times where like you really have to put your pride and ego aside and be willing to see how great you can be. Yeah. And I always felt like I needed the pat on the back. I needed a little safety net. I needed a little bit of like, well, I, you know, I, I might not have tried as hard as I could have here or there. Yeah. And that would give me a built in excuse to be like, all right, well, that's why. That's why I wasn't good enough. That's why situations didn't work out the way it was. And then once you kind of cut that safety net, yeah. you're like, you know what? Screw it, man. I'm going to actually try my absolute hardest. I'm going to see, I'm going to dive all the way in. I'm going to go all in on this thing. I'm going to double down on it. I don't care if I fail, if I succeed, whatever the outcome is, I want to see with my process if I can truly be something, if I can truly chase the stream, if I can truly accomplish it. And I think once that mindset clicked for me, I really embraced, I leaned into that. It's like, man, what what if you do fail? Like, it's not, you know, that scary fear of failure or someone telling you that you're not good enough, yeah. it's really not as scary as you think it is. And that allows you to truly, you know, execute at, at your fullest potential. So I think that was the biggest mental roadblock for me to overcome, whether it was high school, uh, high school wrestling, whether it was college, trying to go from being benched a junior into having to have like the perfect senior year and able yeah. to get a chance to have a chance to have a chance to be in the league <laughs> to then go into draft day thinking that you're going to be that dude being told no nope, you're not, not good enough dude. we're going to draft somebody else we're going to go this way to you know eventually tearing an ACL in in Las Vegas as a team captain towards that pinnacle and have to restart your entire career across the country in Miami and it's yeah. like all right and it's time to dive all in again and yeah. man that's scary yeah. it's it's scary being that vulnerable and, and showing that willingness to be like, you know what, whatever's on the other side of this, I really have to just be the best version of myself every single day. Just like those reps that, that Tom was talking about. Yeah, those, it's, you, those you reps gotta, are important. You gotta use every single rep to your advantage and you can't get uh, you can't get like wavered off of a circumstance or external problems or other people competing against you. You gotta see how great you can be for you and right. for the people that are counting on you, the people that believe in you. I feel like once, that whole thing clicked then you know things started to accomplish and the goals started checking off and then it's like okay what goal can i write down now that's big and scary and it's going to take everything out of me yeah and whether i fail or not i know i'm going to be the best version of myself for the people around me yeah because ultimately you got to look at yourself in that mirror right mm. that's that's the biggest thing that you you have to accomplish is how how can i how can i look myself in that mirror and be okay with what i produce or right. what i what i'm doing and knowing that you didn't give your, your all. I think that that's the, that's the hurdle and that's the block that you literally have to get over. So, no, nah, that's, that's good stuff right there. Um, hey, if you got any questions for me, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm open, man. I mean, I think that that's the biggest thing. All right, well. This is a conversation. This yeah. is all we like well, to do. Well, since here. we're on a podcast now, what is your goals or what's, like, what's, what are you trying to accomplish with the podcast and the platform that you've built yeah. Through nine years in the league, all your experiences, your family, you got everything going for you. <laughs> like, what what are you hoping that your audience gets out of this? Yeah. The people that you're trying to serve, like the platform that you've built, like what do they want to hear out of you on a regular basis that you can give to them? So something that, you know, the reason why I started this uh, podcast and, and Relentlessly Motivated is because I want to give people the knowledge of, hey, look, this is what it takes to you know, achieve the ultimate goal in your field or in your profession or, you know, whatever the standard is for you Mm -hmm. um, and just go above and beyond, you know, just give it your all. Um, You know, with me, I like to give my all to my family, right? I'm a a huge family man. Um, I I love my kids. I love my wife. Um, I'll go above and beyond to be the perfect husband. Um, Even though I'm not, you can ask my wife, she'll probably say, (laughs) she'll she'll give you the laundry. She got a a notes list. Yeah. She'll be like, Hey, look, you didn't do the laundry today. So you're not perfect. I'm like, Oh, okay. Okay. Here we go. Um, But no, honestly, I'm using this as a, a tool and a resource for people who may be going through, you know, different struggles in life. Um, or, you know, I want 
people to feel like, you know, they could listen to something that's authentic, you mm-hmm. know, that they could relate to because relatability is the best ability, right? You, if you, if you can relate to somebody, that's the best ability for yourself. And so for me, you know, I didn't necessarily have that growing up, mm-hmm. you know, I couldn't sit here and say that I truly had a father figure. I didn't. I didn't know what that looked like. But I knew that that's not what I wanted, you know, in a father figure. Um, And so I didn't necessarily have a person that I could look up to other than the fact that um, I had a a high school or my first ever Pop Warner coach, uh, Coach Porkchop, Mike Stokes. I call him Coach Porkchop, Coach Chop. Um, He actually passed away. Uh, due to melanoma so I'm also a big advocate in melanoma research Um, and so he laid the foundation of what it takes to be a a true community person Um, he was the administrator for Pop Warner League down in my uh, in my county and everyone loved him everybody thought the world of him Um, I still do to this day I dedicate every game um, to him Um, and when we played in the Super Bowl here, when I was with the Niners, we played in Hard Rock. Um, I felt like there was a missing piece because he wasn't there. He passed away that year, the year I went to the Super Bowl. And so from that point on, I knew that he was a big reason why I am who I am today. You know, and so that's the reason why I want I want to do this podcast. I want to do. Um, relentlessly motivated I want to inspire people to go out there and chase their dreams and have somebody who they can look up to whether I bring you on as a person you know um, with all the background that you have you know the things that you do in the community Um, I even I spoke about you and I showed you the clip uh, that I had when I did a commercial in LA um, and they pulled me to the side and they asked me who is somebody in the NFL who uh, epitomizes basically a a community, you know, leader. And of course I said you, because you do epitomize that. You are a guy that, you know, will, I'm pretty sure you have an event today (laughs) on an off day on a Tuesday to go and, you know, meet up with some kids. So, you know, exactly. I I know my guy, Um, but I know that's what it takes to be, um, Uh, uh, influential person you know somebody that's going out there in the field and doing everything possible to give back um and and to be a a voice for the community and that's who you are as a person so um i I appreciate everything that you do and you know this ain't gonna be the last of us talking i know that for (laughs) sure you're gonna be on this podcast more so than you think i want to be a friend of the show i'm I'm gonna go on record and say can i be a friend of the show to relentless you motivated. might be you might end up being a, a co-host wow. too man wow. we, we can get you only if there. i can add it to the resume I add it to the resume put it on the resume I'll yeah be good. yeah no no doubt but um i i just want to say man i appreciate you taking the time out of your busy day i know that you have a a, a few things lined up especially the uh, the the community outreach that you do so appreciate your time like i said i know it's very valuable and man if there's one thing that you guys learn is from this guy I promise you. This guy has all the knowledge of giving back and being a, a, a spokesman for the community. So um, thank you, Alec. Appreciate you, brother. And till next time, relentlessly motivated. Stay motivated, y'all. Let's go. Thank you for tuning in to this special episode with Alec Ingold. Once again, this show is brought to you by Mercury. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe wherever you find your podcast, Apple, Spotify, or YouTube. And follow us on social media for clips and highlights from the show throughout the week. Until next time.